Hello everyone, welcome to the PyCharm Fast API tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to set up the authentication process by protecting our APIs using JWT. We will cover the security part. You can also follow the Fast API documentation. It has a clear and detailed explanation. Let's see what's there in the first step. As you can see, we will be using the OAuth2 password bearer. Make sure to install the Python multipart dependency. You can also clearly see that the documentation covers the entire password flow. I strongly recommend checking the Fast API official documentation for reference. Next, we will try to get the current logged in user. There are some additional dependencies required for this setup, like the Python Joe's or Jose which will be used to generate and verify JWT tokens. Passlib, which we have already used for password encryption. Just to speed up the installation process, you can fork my source code and try to grab the requirements.txt. So let's begin our JWT authentication with Fast API. Before beginning, I expect that you have already installed the Python dependencies. I will go to the auth folder and create the router.py file. Let me do the necessary imports. As you can see, we have imported the OAuth2 password request form, which is basically a dependent class which takes parameters grant under type, username, password, client ID, and client secret. For your information, the OAuth2 spec actually requires a field grant under type with a field value of password, but OAuth2 password request form doesn't enforce it. If you need to enforce it, use OAuth2 password request form strict instead of OAuth2 password request form. I will initialize the API router and set the tag name to auth. Next, I will create an endpoint for login. I will pause the implementation for some time. Before that, I need to create a JWT file where I will be creating and verifying tokens. I'm going to do the necessary imports. For creating a JWT token, we need to have a secure secret key, an algorithm, which I will set to HS256. There are even more algorithms supported. Do check the official documentation of Python JOSE. I'll make sure that the token expires after 30 minutes. For the secret key, I will provide a long random string. I will create a function called create under access under token, where I will write the implementation to encode the data and generate the JWT token. This is something which I have directly taken from the Fast API documentation. Next, I will be creating a few Pydana classes. 
I'll be creating three different classes, login, token, and token data. Login will be used for accepting parameters like username and password. Token class will accept token and token under type. Here we're basically referring to bearer. Token data, which accepts email, that too, it's optional. I will come back to JWT and create a new verify under token. This function will be used to check whether the token which we're using is a valid token or not. If email is not present in the token, then we will raise a credential exception, which is actually going to be an HTTP exception. Otherwise, we will be returning the token data. Next, we will create a variable OAuth2 under scheme in which we will initialize the OAuth2 password bearer. OAuth2 under scheme will be used as a dependency when trying to get the current logged in user. I will create the get under current under user function where I will verify the token. If the token is verified successfully, then email will be returned, else the exception will be raised with a 401 status code. Now I will come back to the router and I will resume working on the login endpoint. This is a standard API, not async. It is completely fine if you can choose whatever is suitable for you. It's not necessary that you need to define all of your APIs to async. Some of your APIs can also be sync. Choice is yours. In the request, we're going to make OAuth2 password request form as a dependency, so it will prompt us to provide username and password. I will check whether the user is present in the database or not. If it is not present, I will raise an HTTP exception. I will also validate the password and raise an exception accordingly if it doesn't match. If everything is good, then I will go ahead and create a new token and return it back to the user. I'll go to main.py and register the auth router. After we registered the router successfully, I will go to the user module. I will open the router and import get under current under user. I will pass it in all of my APIs as a dependency, excluding a few.
Once I do this, I will show you in the Swagger UI that the endpoint is going to show a lock symbol, which means the endpoint is protected and you need a valid token to access it. You can also observe that a link is appearing named Authorize with a lock sign. Once I click on it, it's going to prompt me to enter a valid username and password. I will click on Authorize and we are successfully authenticated. Now if I try to authenticate, then it will give me a list of all users. I'm going to copy the line and paste it in every endpoint. I will only exclude it in the Register API. You can even get rid of this if you define this as a global dependency in the API router. Then you don't need to repeat this process. There's an interesting discussion which I came across and maybe you might want to take some of your APIs and make them not protected like a load balance or health check. But you want to take advantage of the global dependency. Then you should check this issue. The link will be coming up on your screen. You can see now that the user module has all the APIs except register that now have the lock icon. Next, we will focus on products and other modules. I will also replace the manually provided emails with current under user.email.
So we have protected carts and orders, excluding products. It's completely up to you which endpoints you want to protect or ignore. If I now try adding something to the cart, it's not going to work out. We need to have a valid token. Once you authenticate yourself, then your API is going to work smoothly. You can see now the item has been successfully added. So I hope you got some understanding about the auth flow. If not, then I would recommend checking the fast API documentation, which has a more detailed explanation. In the next video, we will be focusing on testing using PyTest and AsyncIO.